and welcome to One on One. My name is Jess Brady. We are filming today at the Bull and Barrel in London for this month's episode. And I am joined by Genevieve Fisher, London's own country music star. Thank you so much for being here. No now, you know, your name comes up a lot in London. You do a lot locally. Uh, you know, big name and personality in Canadian country music. But how did you get your start? Because people might know you now. Yeah. But where did you, how did you start out in the industry? It's kind of a funny story. Well, um, things kind of started for me um, as a little girl I, I started competing in competitions so in southern Ontario um, and things just kind of progressed from there after you know um, I started doing a bit of you know bigger competitions um, things just sort of started falling into place at the age of 16 I got you know my manager and um, yeah, things just have grown from there. It's been quite a process, but it's it's been fun. And it's, it seems to be that like, you know, you put in all that hard work at the beginning, right? And, yeah. and then as you said, it starts to take off a little bit when you turn yeah. 16. This is kind of living the dream that a lot of people think about, but they don't understand how difficult that can be, all the effort that's put into it. Absolutely, and I feel like um, it's, it's an ongoing thing. I, I always try to explain to people that the music industry is funny in the sense that at one moment you like are flying high and then you know the next you could kind of have like a a, a bit of a lull um, uh, so that can kind of that can be tough but I mean it makes you have thick skin and it's, it's a tough industry to be in but um, the number one thing I just say is that you, you gotta love it to be in this industry you have to live breathe and, and just love it so it's it's been a lot of fun and, and I've learned a lot about myself and just a lot about the industry mm -hmm. and so one of your first big hits was July yes. because you had four on the top 50 yes. in your career so far many more to come I'm absolutely I so. certain <laughs> and what was that like when you know July came out and it was a hit and people loved it what was it like to hear it on the radio for the first time it was amazing you know hearing your song for the first time on the radio it never gets old. Every song you kind of release, the first time you hear it, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> like you kind of have a, a mini freak out. Um, but you know, July was just a song that I think so many people could relate to. It was a song about summer love and just, you know, the simple things in life and just, just you know, finding that person that you want to grow old with and just, you know, spend every waking minute with them. So um, July was a song that I was so happy that both you know, men and women were connecting with, and it was so cool to go on Twitter and hear people like tagging, you know, hashtagging July, like, wish I was with my girl at the lake, and it was really cool to, to, to see that. So, um, you know, and of course, being doing live shows and seeing people sing along, that's a pretty surreal, a surreal thing to, to, to have that. I can only imagine, because I mean, you're up there, you know that song, you've yeah. written the words yourself, and then to see that impact on yeah. other people, it just must be, uh it must yeah. blow your mind. For sure, and I mean, you know the first few times you see that happen you're kind of taken back you're like oh like oh my gosh they know my song like they know the word that's so <laughs> cool so um, yeah it's 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 amazing that that makes it all worth it seeing your fans sing your song I'm gonna blame it on you for the way you got me 24-7 thinking about your blue eyes ruling me in and my head is spinning got me feeling like I ain't in control of the way You do your own writing a lot of the time and yes. what is that process like is there something that inspires you when you sit down and put pen to paper is there you have to be in the right frame of mind for things for sure I mean um, you know throughout the years I've done a lot of writing and I've done a lot of co-writing with many different people so um, every every session is different some are harder than others sometimes I've gone into a session and it's like so easy like you go in you come up with an idea or you you go in with an idea and it's just like kind of the words are falling onto the paper it's really cool um, but then other times you know you you write about something a little more tough or it might just be a song that you get stuck on but every every process is different I usually like to go into sessions with ideas whether it be song titles or a cool melody or just you know a few lyrics um, but yeah, like I said, it kind of you kind of walk into a se session and just kind of feel the vibe of whoever you're writing with and, and kind of go from there. But yeah, I just um, I love writing. It's one of my favorite you know aspects of, of my career. 
it's exciting and you know you know you've, you've done some as you said you know writing and do you ever think of someone specific that you would like to sing a song like you're like oh this is fantastic you know who'd be great for it x y or z yeah yeah i actually wrote a song um last actually just this past April when I was in Nashville. I wrote it with my good friend uh, Bruce Wallace and my friend Hannah Bethel. And the song's called Weapon. And as we were writing it, we were like, oh my gosh, Carrie Underwood could sing this song. So, I mean, big pipe dream. But I mean, that'd be amazing to have someone, um, you know, Sing your, sing your song. Absolutely, and it's, it would just be such an interesting take on it because, I mean, they're going to interpret it in their way and add their own touches absolutely. to it. So Yeah, absolutely. And of course, I've had like attachments to songs where I'm like, ah, I don't know if I could let this one go. Like, I want to sing this song. But yeah, it just, um, it would be amazing to get a cut from a huge artist, but maybe in the future, you never know. Hey, you never know. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> You're extremely fingers talented. Crossed. That's right, we will all keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> now, you've also done a lot of traveling across country down into Nashville yeah. as you said where you're doing writing is there anywhere in particular that you really love to visit or would love to perform um, yes the first time I ever went out um, to Nova Scotia I like fell in love with it um, the people just everything about it um, I did sort of this um, private concert for a hundred listeners um, from a, like a radio station put it put it on um, and it was one of the best shows I've ever done just the people at it were amazing so out east Nova Scotia is, a, is one of my favorite places yeah <laughs> it's awesome and good food too oh absolutely and the hospitality right yes. like that's it's amazing in terms yeah. of uh, you know just people reaching out and, and doing all sorts of great things yeah. for you and in a very musical place everybody sings or plays an instrument so that that was really cool Awesome. Yeah. And so you've had a chance to work with a lot of uh, great uh, other producers and songwriters. Yeah. And is there anyone that you think, oh, if I could just work with them, it would be fantastic? Anyone on your wish list that you'd love to collaborate with? If I were to pick somebody in terms of like an artist to collaborate with, I'd love to collaborate with Blake Shelton. Ooh, very nice. I love like you know what? There's something about Blake Shelton that I'm like, it's pretty cool. He's, one thing I love about him is that all of his songs are different. None of them really sound the same, which I really admire about him. So I'd love to work with him. I'd also really love to work with Derek Rutan. He's a Canadian boy um, and he's had huge success. Um, he's written a few songs for Blake Shelton and yeah, so it's nice to, uh, to see some Canadians uh, hitting it big in the States, so. Absolutely, yeah. it's fantastic. And so speaking of hitting it big, London hosting CCMA Awards yeah. and Country Music Week. Lots going on here so in much. town for that. Um, you know, what is that like for this massive event to be coming to London? It's your hometown. This yes. is your turf. You're taking part. Yes. Tell me a little bit about you know what that's like for you. Well, it's amazing. It's been a few years since I've actually attended um, you know the CCMA Awards and Country Music Week. So. Um, it's one of the funnest weeks. There's so much going on. London is is in for a treat. Um, but yeah, to have it here, you know, my hometown, it's amazing. And and to be a part of so many different events, it's amazing. I'm I'm really looking forward to the week. Some exciting things that I can't really right. talk about. <laughs> I wish I could, but yeah, it's everybody's going to be in for a treat. There's so many different um, events that people can attend. So it's just going to be a, a a wild week, I think here. Absolutely, I think so as well. And so after this wild week ends, yes. it's going to be so busy for you. How do you recharge? What do you do to kind of like decompress from like the crazy? Um, honestly, I love just hanging out at home. Um, all my friends laugh because I have this like huge, huge couch at home and they make fun of me. They say that I look like the girl on big comfy couch or whatever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Molly, right? Or is that the doll? No, oh yeah, I don't know. <laughs> whatever, anyways. But, um, I just love vegging out, having a glass of wine or watching a movie. Um, yeah, just, just vegging out a little bit, just taking a breather, taking some time for myself. Because it can get really overwhelming, especially when you're up really late, early morning. So yeah. it can be it can be hard sometimes, but definitely love just relaxing at home. Excellent. And now there's a new addition to your family for you and your fiance. Sure Tell me about this little little critter. I'll tell you. So her, her name's Lila. <laughs> she's our little basset hound. Um, she's great. She's like nine weeks old, so she's a baby, and it's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling you earlier. I'm yeah. like, 
maybe this was a bad time <laughs> getting our puppy because like CCFAs and just so much is going on, but she's totally worth it. We love her so much and she's, yeah, she's so cute. That's awesome. Now you were saying before that her ears can sometimes be problematic. <laughs> her ears are very problematic. They yeah. go in her little wa water dish. So we've got to wring out her ears after she drinks. So cute. Maybe get her like a scrunchie and you can yes, put it on top put her of her head. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'll do her hair before she has her drink of water. <laughs> Well, there's something that we like to do at the end of every episode okay. on one-on-one. -on -one. It's called Fast Facts, okay. and it's just to kind of get an idea of your personality and things sure. that you like, things you don't like. Okay. So we'll start really easy. Okay. Uh, Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Okay. Decisive. Uh, favorite thing you're watching on Netflix right now or on TV? Oh, I just finished Orange is the New Black. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, favorite vacation spot? Uh, St. Martin. Ooh, lovely. Yes. Very nice. Uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. I would also say coffee. Journalists, we run on that stuff. <laughs> so that's our fuel. Um, let's see. Ooh, lake or ocean? Ooh, oh, ocean. <laughs> you can't go wrong with either, no, really. No, I know. Not, not a bad thing but at all. But ocean. Yeah. Ocean for sure. <laughs> and last one, let's see. Let's see. What are we going to say? The Beatles or the Rolling Stones? Rolling Stones. Nice. So busy schedule, yes. lots going on. What's coming up next for you? Um, this in October, so in about a month. Oh, it's crazy how time is flying. Um, but I, I'm leaving for Nashville, um, so I'm going to be there for about about two weeks, and I'm going to be um, working on some new material. Um, so I've got lots of different writing sessions set up, and uh, you know maybe this is. I feel like this is going to be the start of me you know, working on some new tracks for a possible album, you never know. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a really good time. Um, this is like kind of my creative time. The fall and winter is when kind of the magic happens, getting ready for summertime, which is filled with festivals and just different performances. So really looking forward to getting back to Nashville and hanging out with my friends there and, and doing some writing. I'm stronger and wiser, but then So with so much going on, you know, you're headed down to Nashville, there are lots of exciting things coming up. For people who are going to want to keep track of all of that, which is everybody, um, where can they go? How do they keep tabs on you? Yeah, for sure. So um, you can visit my website, which is www.genevievefisher.ca. On Facebook, of course, I'm on there as Genevieve Fisher. Um, Instagram and Twitter. Um, Instagram, I'm Genevieve Fisher Music. And on Instagram, my, or sorry, Twitter. Perfect. My Twitter handle is um, at Genevieve underscore F. So you can keep it in touch with me and just follow what I'm doing. We will keep tabs on you, find out about all the great stuff that's going on. And uh, thank you for being here no today. No problem. Thanks so much. Hey, we need to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be joined by Eric Etheridge.